Hello English 151. This is our last lecture. It's on comma usage and hopefully you find it useful. First of all, let's remember what an independent clause is. I will be using independent clause, independent clause throughout this video. So an independent clause is a clause that has a subject, a predicate, and a complete thought. So a dependent clause is something that has a subject and a predicate, but it does not have a complete thought. So if you want an example, um, although Percy was at the shop, he didn't catch any mice there today. So although Percy was at the shop is a dependent clause and he didn't catch any mice there today is a independent clause. So you separate these two things with a comma. Now I want to talk about how to join two sentences together. A simple sentence has a subject and a predicate unit. But if you have two sentences that you want to join together, then that's a compound sentence. I will be telling you how to join these two things together in a moment. So the first way to join two sentences together is to use a comma and a coordinating conjunction. So a coordinating conjunction is a fanboys word. Do you remember what we went over in class? So fanboys stands for the word that you can actually use to join together two sentences. So for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so, fanboys. So you can use those to join um, two sentences together using a comma and a coordinating conjunction. So using an example, um, I will show you how to use a coordinating conjunction and a comma in order to join the two sentences together. So simple sentence one. Um, my first pet from the SPCA was known as Libby. Simple sentence B. She protected us as children from wild animals. So if you want to join those two sentences together, you would say, my first pet from the SPCA was known as Libby, comma, and she protected us as children from wild animals. The next way to join two independent clauses together is to use a semicolon. So you would use a semicolon to join the two sentences that I just gave you together. My first pet from the SPCA was known as Libby, semicolon. She protected us as children from wild animals. You can also use a uh, semicolon and what's called an adverbial conjunction. So you can say something like, my first pet from the SPCA was known as Libby, semicolon, moreover, comma, she protected us as children from wild animals. Lastly, you can use a colon in order to separate two independent clauses. In this case, the two thoughts that you have should be joined in some way. So one independent clause should follow directly the other independent clause. So I'm going to use a different example for this one. So the first simple sentence that I'm going to use is there are many advantages to having dogs. The second simple sentence is they protect children from dangerous animals. So you separate these two thoughts with a colon. There are many advantages to having dogs, colon. They protect children from dangerous animals. Now I'm going to tell you how to use a comma in different situations. So the situations that you might use a comma in are in a series, when you're separating out non-essential information, um, when you're doing sentence introductions, and when you have miscellaneous things such as adjectives, dates, addresses, and quotations. So first of all, I'm going to tell you how to separate items in a series. 
So when you're making a list of something, they all have to be what's called parallel elements. So when you're making parallel elements, it either has to be all nouns, all adjectives, um, all independent clauses, etc. So they all have to be the same. For example, Percy dislikes lots of different kinds of animals, such as dogs, rabbits, and other cats. So in this series, you would put a comma between dogs, rabbits, and cats. So it would go dogs, comma, rabbits, comma, and cats. I also have a side note here about the Oxford comma, which is including the comma after rabbits, um, in between rabbits and cats. Because some people like to leave that comma out, which is a comma omission. But when you're trying to make a list of items, sometimes it changes the meaning of the list if you leave out that comma. For example, if you said for breakfast this morning, I had eggs, toast, and orange juice. If you had all the commas in there, eggs, comma, toast, comma, and orange juice, then it's a series of items. If you leave out the comma after toast, then you have eggs, comma, toast, and orange juice, which makes it sound like you're eating your toast and orange juice together. So when I say you have to have parallel items, um, I'm gonna give you an example of how you could accidentally do this wrong. So if you said cats are graceful, athletic, and they are usually versatile, that's two adjectives and an independent clause. So those are not parallel items. So what you should say instead is cats are graceful, athletic, and versatile, because those are all adjectives. So I'm just going to quickly mention the serial semicolon. The serial semicolon is used when you have items in a series and you want to list them off, but the series has commas within it. So you have to separate the items that have commas and differentiate it. So you would use semicolons instead. You may also want to set up a list using a colon. So when you're using a colon, the first part of the sentence has to be an independent clause. Um, so for example, if you said, dogs have distinct characteristics from those of cats, including colon, that would be not an independent clause. So you wouldn't be able to use that. You would have to say, dogs have distinct characteristics from those of cats, colon. Another thing is, is that after your list is done, you should end the sentence. So do not continue the sentence after you finish the list. So for example, Dogs have distinct characteristics from those of cats. A sense of loyalty, comma. A love of the great outdoors, comma. And an Ill inability to jump from high places. And then if you continue the sentence and say, comma, and should not be thought of as just another kind of domesticated animal, period, then that would be incorrect. So you have to end it after the last thing, which is an inability to jump from high places. Let's move on to sentence introductions. So there are a few ways that you can introduce a sentence. You can use one word, or you can use a phrase, or you can use a dependent clause. So I'm going to give you examples of each of them. So for one word, ultimately, comma, cats will one day rule the world. The second one, through the use of keen intellect, comma, cats will slowly but surely consume the globe. Dependent clause, when humans chose to let cats into their lives, comma, their freedom to make choices became limited, period. So those are the three ways that you may be able to introduce a sentence using a comma to separate it out. So 
So now we're going to look at non-essential information. There is a lot of non-essential information to cover, but basically what you're doing is adding in information using commas and it separates it out so that people know that it's non-essential information. So for example, you might say dogs, comma, undoubtedly, comma, love to play outside in the rain, period. Cats, comma, however, comma, prefer to stay indoors. So those are two examples of how to separate out non-essential information. So one way of um, using non-essential information is by using an A positive, which means that the non-essential information is modifying one of the other words in the sentence. So for example, last year, comma, which is a sentence introduction, Percy, comma, the first employee of the bookstore, comma, that's the non-essential information, managed to sell exactly zero books. So that is separating out the non-essential information that Percy was the first employee of the bookstore. Um, so Percy is what the first employee of the bookstore is modifying. However, if you do it the other way around, then it might not be correct anymore. So if you were to say last year, comma, the first employee of the bookstore, comma, Percy, comma, managed to sell exactly zero books, then that would be wrong because you're saying that Percy is the non-essential information. So if you wanted to put it in that order, you would have to leave out those commas. The next non-essential information that I want to go over is something called an adjectival clause. So you might have something like Percy, comma, who ate as much fish as possible, comma, is a hero among cats. So the who ate as much fish as possible is placed inside the commas and it's talking about Percy. So next, I want to talk about concluding phrases that are separated out by a comma. This is non-essential information that is separated out by a comma. So the example is, a dog provides humans with numerous services. So that is the independent clause. So after that, you would put a comma and the non-essential information is from comfort during hard times to work in the field of battle. So you would have the whole sentence would say, a dog provides humans with numerous services, comma, from comfort during hard times to work in the field of battle. Okay, now we're at the miscellaneous stuff. So things like quotations. So for example, if you said, Blake states, comma, quotation marks, the road of excess leads to the palace of wisdom, and quotation marks, bracket, line 28, bracket, period. So you would have the comma after Blake states. However, if grammar does not necessitate you using a comma, then don't use it. For example, if you said Blake states that, then you wouldn't need to use a comma. Next, let's look at adjectives. So when you're listing off adjectives, you might have things like the animal that could best portray Canadian values is the brave, comma, loyal dog. So brave and loyal are modifying the word dog separately. So you would separate it with a comma. But if you had two things that both modify the word dog together and can't be separated, then you wouldn't use a comma. Last things last. So now we have numbers, dates, and addresses. So the first one is the date. May 30th, comma, 2018, comma, will be our class on grammar, which was when I originally did this PowerPoint. Um, how about an address? The university is located at 3333 University Way, comma, Prince George, comma, British Columbia. Or if you want to use numbers. So if you had the number 45,000, you would have 
45 comma 000, or if you had the number 13 million, you would have one comma 300 comma 00. So that's how you use commas. So that's the end of the comma usage lecture and the end of our lectures for this class. So have a good week and try to get all your assignments done. Um, if you're still having trouble with any of that, please let me know. Uh, so see you later. Bye students.